ओम नम श्री यतिराजा विवेकानंद सूर सच्चिखस्वूपाय स्वामीने तापहारिणे सो इट्स अ मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट प्लेजर दैट विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन मंडे एज वी अनाउंस्ड ऑन स्वामी विवेकानंद जन्मतिथि that uh, we will be discussing his life as expounded or as written by sister nevidita so her biography was inspired by the uh, brother disciples of swami vivekananda who wanted her to write so when swami ji passed away entered into mahasamadhi on july 4th 1902 we all know that so in a letter to miss josephine mcloyd who was one of her one of his western disciples sister nevidita writes that is how we come to know that she was approached by the direct disciples of sri ramakrishna who were guru bhais of swami vivekananda who were not only shocked but uh, were perhaps not in a position to write his biography they didn't realize that swami ji would leave them so soon at such a young age so they requested sister nevidita who was definitely competent enough to write a biography so she writes to jo who was a close friend and who was also a disciple of swami vivekananda she wrote a letter as early as on july 16th 1902 swami ji had passed away in on july 4th and within a few weeks just within two weeks time less than two weeks uh, nevidita writes to jo that people suggest that i should write a life of swami swami means her guru swami vivekananda but i think time must pass first but if you will tell me that you want it i will begin any time now she is taking advice because it was too early she even she was not able to get over the shock of a sudden passing away of their guru at such a young age they had not they at least expected it but at the same time there was pressure from many quarters that uh, we are planning to write a biography do the passing away the mahasamadhi of swami vivekananda was not expected but still uh, the brother disciples felt that in his memory uh, some biography must be written but nobody was prepared to do it because they felt that they were not, not competent enough to write a biography so on june 23rd 1904 she noted in her diary this is much later of course she wanted some time to recoup from the terrible shock which she received because she had uh, as all of you know sister nevidita had left her home country england and decided to help swami vivekananda in his mission mainly to uh, for the empowerment of indian women that was the main task which he wanted but in general she wanted to carry forward the world mission of swami vivekananda in whatever way she could so she had come to india with lot of hopes in 1898 swami ji himself received her it was on 26th january uh, which we also celebrate Uh, on 28th january not 26 26th january swami vivekananda landed in india in 1897 coincidentally uh, two years later uh, one year later <coughs> in 1898 she herself <coughs> came and landed in kolkata uh, port and she was received by swami ji himself on 28th january so she had come there with lot of hopes and within 4 years of her coming uh, swami vivekananda passed away in 1902 it was a big shock to her <clears throat> so on 23rd june 1904 she notes he she used to write her diary 
and she says swami ramkrishnananda came and asked me to write the life of swami ji so an incomplete uh, manuscript uh in the uh, there uh, later on researchers found an incomplete manuscript in the bangiya sahitya parishad library so that is a library which was in kolkata so they collect all manuscripts so later on researchers found that she had attempted and there was a incomplete manuscript which seems to be her first attempt <coughs> to write about swami vivekananda and it is dated in that that manuscript which uh, bangiya sahitya parishad library has found uh, the first attempt that she made to write swami vivekananda's biography was dated 6th august 1904 that means on june 23rd 1904 she is noting that sri ram swami ramkrishnananda came maybe a few days earlier and asked him asked her to write a biography of uh, swami vivekananda and within uh, i think a few days or maybe a few months on 6th august she has started writing already the first few selected pages uh, which have been added as an appendix at the end to the master as i saw him uh, that that is the book to show the aim and purpose of her undertaking why she chose to write the biography <clears throat> so this is the appendix though it is at the end of the biography which we will begin from today we will discuss that first so that shows that appendix that is the unpublished manuscript which has been published as it is where she shows what is her aim why is why is, what is the purpose of her undertaking this to write this biography so she says and in that she says i have given up the idea of attempting to write your life i am just content she she is writing as it were uh addressing swami vivekananda i have given up the idea of attempting to write your life she is speaking to her guru though he is no longer alive but still she is as it were speaking to her own guru whom she was missing and she says and i am content to record the story of my own vision and understanding only that is why the word master as i saw him she doesn't she uh, accepts very humbly that must my master was far greater than what i have understood so my vision may be a limited vision and my understanding of him would be very limited so whatever i have understood whatever uh, whatever of the master i saw the master as i saw him she makes it very clear that this is not a biography i am not competent to write that but i am very much content i was trying to attempt your life she says but i have given it up i don't want to do it because i know my biography however nicely i write would be incomplete as swami vivekananda himself said of his own guru that i can't when girish gosh asked him why don't you write a biography of the great master which of course ultimately swami shardanand ji did but swami vivekananda was approached first he said no i can't because i am too incompetent so if swami vivekananda is incompetent to write write the biography of sri ramakrishna then naturally nivedita would we can understand very well what she must have felt to attempt to even to attempt to write a biography of her guru so she is addressing him very humbly uh, though he is no longer in the body but he was in very much with her in spirit so he says i have given up the idea of attempting to write your life and i am content to record the story of my own vision and understanding only how it began how it grew what memories i gathered my tale will be record of fragments means i i have lot of fragments of my interactions with you so whatever i attempt to write she humbly writes before she even started writing she wrote this and she says that will be a record of small fragments my connections with him whatever little i could time i could spend with him whatever voyage she did with 
swami ji the voyage she did when he visited england for the second time on his way to america and also some of the wanderings she undertook uh when she traveled with him all over india so and then some other interactions when she was in kolkata struggling to start the nivedita school she used to visit belur mat now and then so these were the fragments which were her cherished memories and she says i just put them together her including her memories of her first visit which with which the master's biography begins so he says it will be just a record of different fragments of my interaction with him and what i understood of him understood of his message my vision my own vision of what he wanted me to do or what he wanted to do and his the memories i have gathered yet i do pray that through this un this broken utterance my treatment of this writing this biography is fragmentary but and it will be broken in several places because there are phases the first meeting how she met swami ji and then many other things are there so it's not a complete biography like other biographies are written most of the biographies begin with the birth and all those things no this is not a biography of that type we all know how the short biography of swami ji most of us have read so and they are just uh, of course it, that that eastern and western disciples is a very comprehensive biography and they would have taken some material from this book as well because that is a compilation or maybe an attempt to write a biography by many disciples including swami virajanand ji in mayavati they decided to publish swami ji's comprehensive life which we are not discussing but we are just taking this book because this was the first historically speaking this was one of the first publications on the life of swami vivekananda of course you will be surprised to know that even before swami ji's mahasamadhi an attempt was made in a language not in english not in bengali but in a language which swami ji never spoke in gujarati in as early as 1897 even before his ma samadhi a small biography of swami vivekananda was already published so we can't say it is a and it is surprising that how a biography of someone who is still alive could be written normally biographies are written after the person after the personality passes away but there is a book very short account of his life up to his visit to india after he conquered the west after he spoke at the parliament of religions after his successful tour of uh, usa and then he came to europe and then england and then finally decided to go home and he uh, lands in india in 1897 26 january of 1897 we are just completing 125 years of his return to india the famous uh, reception he got he landed in colombo and his lectures from colombo al- al- to almora so he first landed in sri lanka uh, so uh, that uh, he spoke there were so many talks that he gave uh, that is all recorded and swami vivekananda before he left the western shores a small biography giving all the details of his birth and his contact with sri ram krishna was published in a uh, in the gujarati language and it is surprising that somebody knew that he would be great the person who wrote the book is a part of a very big volume of biographies known as mahajan mandal so in that Sri Ram Krishna's life is there. That is also one of the earliest biographies of Sri Ram Krishna. Small, uh, maybe thirty-six pages. But Swami Vivekananda's life is also included, in which the author, um, Magan Lal Patel, he was the author of that book, or you can say the compiler of that book. He gathered resources of all people, all great people in India. Mahajan Mandal means. 
a biography of all the great people in India. Most of them had died. But some of the great people who, who were covered in this big book were still alive. And Swami Vivekananda was one of them. So it is very surprising to know that he gathered and he writes even before Swami Vivekananda landed in uh, the Indian subcontinent and he became famous. Nobody knew that there would be such a wonderful reception. But this Maganlal Patel somehow came to know of the greatness of Swami Vivekananda and he says he is about to come to India. He writes it sometime in December, I believe. The book was published in December. So, in 1896. So, in 97 January, Swamiji comes. He is only aware of the fact that he is coming to India. But even in 1896, the book was small book, small life of Swamiji was published in Gujarati, where Maganlal Patel says that we think there will be a great reception we are all anxiously waiting. So he anticipated something which many people would not have anticipated. The great welcome he got, Rajas pulling his uh, 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 carriage when he landed in the Indian subcontinent, 26 January 1897. But in 1896 already his biography was written. Such was his impact on the people. Of course, Magarlal Patel says that he received all the materials from his friend, who was none other than Kalipad Ghosh. Kalipad Ghosh was a disciple, just like Girish Ghosh, who received the grace of Sri Ramakrishna. And this Kalipad Ghosh was the was a very big dealer of paper, and he was the manager actually of a firm which manufactured paper in England. Uh, I think the Lion brand that was a very uh, that's a very big company which sold uh, uh, I think Higginson and company which so sold the Lion brand in all over India paper the printing paper and that he, one of the managers of that company who lived in Mumbai who also hosted Swami Vivekananda Kalipada Ghosh was a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna he must have given this material because he was supplying paper to this Maganlal Patel who was publishing his own books. So they came in touch and via Kalipad Ghosh, uh, he received all the biographical details and published his biography even when he was alive. I don't know whether Swami Vivekananda ever read it because he was in a hurry and he passed away within a few years. But we cannot say that this book is the first biography. An attempt was made much before and surprisingly it was not in Bengali language. The, uh, the birthplace of Swami Vivekananda. People would expect that the first biography of a prophet would be written by his own people. But Swami Vivekananda clearly told Tilak once that you come to Bengal and I'll go to Maharashtra. We will have better impact. So Tilak asked him, why do you say this? He says a prophet is not honored while he's still alive in his own, in his own land. It, it, it is true because Swami Vivekananda, though he was, there was so much of criticism. Even when he returned to Kolkata, people, Abedanandji and all found it so difficult to arrange for a, uh, for a public meeting for him, to welcome him. South of India, uh, Sri Lanka, then Chennai, Madras, and all the people gave such a rousing welcome. And Abhedananji and all felt that now Swamiji will come to Kolkata and we have to give him a welcome. And they were finding it difficult even to gather a crowd, though because they were without any money, how to welcome the hero. They were very keen to do, but people were so jealous, so jealous of Swami Vivekananda, especially the Brahmos. Pratap Chandra and all. People were refusing. First of all, they said he has, he has defied the caste rules. He has gone abroad. He should not have done it. He doesn't belong to the Brahmin caste. He's a Kayastha and how, how could he take Sanya? There was so much of jealousy and uh, it was very difficult for the Guru Bhais to even organize a book. Later on by Thakur's grace, by 
the divine grace everything was successful and the famous calcutta meeting was held uh, but so much of trouble and surprisingly after arranging this meeting it is so sad a side chapter in the history that how a prophet is not honored in his own land the expenses there was a committee which was formed and that would have pained swami ji a lot it would have pained swami ji a lot the committee which was set up who collected funds because to organize a meeting of that capacity there were huge crowds but you can imagine all the expenses of the decoration pendol and all after honoring swami vivekananda this is a practically very unknown fact it is there in shankari prasad basu's uh, book the famous biography has done lot of research it is not very well known but this fact is true that the organizer sent the bill the bill for expenses incurred in welcoming swami ji himself to his birthplace it it is it should have been a matter of honor to welcome him but they sent him the expenses that we have incurred so many expenses in your event you honor a person and send a bill to him to to the mart i think they perhaps uh, i think uh, it may be a mistake but somehow they were asked to pay a part of the expenses or whatever it is so it was very painful that even while honoring they did not do it with a full heart so it is not sur- not surprising to find a biography in a very strange language a language which swami vivekananda never spoke so that is why swami ji jokingly told uh, uh, bal ganga the tilak that a prophet is not honored in his own land it is very significant because <clears throat> people think oh he is one of us that's what turiyanand ji also once said that we did not understand the greatness of our guru bhai swami vivekananda we just thought he was one of us thakur loved him he was slightly better than us but once he be conquered he went to the west and became such a inspiring force all over the world then they came to know who he was so turiyanand ji also uh, mentions in his reminiscences after the passing away of swami ji he was shocked he came back he was in shanti ashrama swami ji had sent him to the west and had told him not to come back stay there and work for um, the vedantic mission which he wanted to start in america he was well settled but somehow some intuition told him that swami ji is not going to live long he wanted to see so he undertakes a voyage but his heart was broken when he got a telegram saying that swami ji has passed away so it was a big shock to all the guru bhais and after that swami turiyanand ji writes he says when the fish play with the moon if the fish play with the shadow of the moon or the reflection of the moon in the water when they see the reflection of the moon the fish think it is a bright light and they play with that moon thinking that that is the reflection itself is the moon but when they realize that the moon was far off and it is much more bright and much more shining than the reflection then they understand their foolishness so that is how he says when swami ji was with us we were just seeing his shadow we could not estimate his greatness but when swami vivekananda passed away then they realized what kind of work he had done so that is why that sums up when swami vivekananda himself said if there were to be another vivekananda then they would have known what this vivekananda has done then a uh, people would have known what this view only he would understand this so he knew his uh, the task was so difficult even to convince his own guru bhais leave alone the householder disciples who perhaps did not agree with many of the things which he started including master mashe when he started the banaras seva the hospital said what is this you are starting all these activities uh, so he was not he did, they also thought that he is not acting according to the wishes of sri ram krishna so there were so many confusions and swami ji passed away all of a sudden 
so nobody was ready to write his biography nobody thought he will go so soon anyway sister so you understand how difficult it is and a person from a far off place writes at the end of this biography because it's a biography written when swami vivekananda was alive this gujarati biography says swami vivekananda is expected to come to india soon and we are sure the author writes though he has not seen vivekananda he has just heard from kalipada ghosh he writes at the concluding part of the biography obviously he has to leave it incomplete because swami ji was alive so he says uh from the from the wonderful work uh judging from the wonderful work swami vivekananda has done in america england and other places we are sure that a great welcome is waiting for the hero when he lands in india so a person who was not belonging to the place where he swami ji lived and swami ji grew up he writes this anticipating the wonderful advent so also sister navidita no doubt people his guru bhais understood him much better perhaps they would have understood definitely raja maharaj and others but they were shocked that swami ji could leave them so early and they didn't have perhaps the uh, desire or maybe the courage to write his biography just as turiyanand ji said he was far great greater than us we thought he is one of us maybe a little more intelligent but when we see uh, when the fish sees that it's not the reflection but the real moon when it sees oh then it finds what a uh, how poorly i judged this person uh, so his guru bhais and obviously his disciples among his disciples nobody was ready to write a biography because they knew they will not do a good job even sister nivedita as we see here she says you may catch a glimpse here and there of the greatness of your heart i mean he, he she is addressing swami vivekananda he says i pray to you that whatever i have managed to write some word of yours maybe here and maybe there will be heard by the readers and some glimpse caught of the greatness of your heart so mind these words she says the greatness of your heart his heart she, she was not impressed like many people of the wonderful speeches swami ji gave swami ji gave wonderful talks he, he did so much of work he started the ram krishna mission but nivedita because he was very close to swami ji's heart she could understand what a broad heart he had what a wonderful heart he had some of the disciples like sturdy who disagreed with him even henrietta muller but he forgave them all he he did not even have any ill feeling towards his own disciples who somehow disagreed with him who had approached him with some selfish purpose perhaps otherwise why will they disagree with him they had their own access to grind so there their love for swami ji was shallow though they did some great work sturdy in, in, introduced him to uh, uh, england he was the one who invited him but he had his own purpose for inviting swami ji he wanted him to help him translate his books in fact the first 7 weeks of swami vivekananda stay in england was just to help sturdy write a book which he has published in his name the arada bhakti sutra the divine love which is which he published for that his guru helped him and he of course he has acknowledged that he received some help but it was published in his own name so perhaps he had his own idea that i will use swami vivekananda for my purpose so that is why when swami ji knew that i am not in i have been not been born for one mr sturdy or for one mr miss henrietta muller who also uh, was disillusioned and somehow she felt she also disassociated with the vedanta movement in england for some reason but she helped she funded the buying of uh, the purchase of the belurmat land 
So all those things they have done. They were all very kind and cordial to him. For some reason, they even but Swami Ji's letter to Sturdy, saying that you may have your own reasons for disagreeing with me, but being a guru, I love you with all my heart. So Sister Nivedita knew this. Josephine McLeod, who dearly loved Swami Vivekananda. They knew. So that's why they were corresponding with each other. And finally, Sister Nivedita writes an emotional foreword saying that the greatness may be some utterance here and some utterance there which I have recorded, which I have heard myself in this wonderful biography. Perhaps some person down the line, after many years, as we keep reading this book, this was one of the first books I read on Swami Vivekananda. But the way it was written by a disciple who was one of the most favorite of all the disciples. So she, she writes in this biography, though it is a record of how she saw her own guru or master, the master as I saw him. And every time she wrote something, she used to sign the letter by saying that uh, Nevedita of Ramakrishna Vivekananda. Of course, Holy Mother is implied there because she was still alive. But Sri Ramakrishna, she dedicated all her writings. Whatever she was, was because of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda and his master Ramakrishna. So this title, Master as I saw him, is a very apt title. It's a wonderful title written by somebody who lived, not only lived, in close contact with Swamiji, though the period was very less. There were other people, Shardhananji and all, who lived for a longer time. Virajanji was there. So they all managed to write a biography, Eastern and Western disciples. It's a very comprehensive biography that, that, is, uh, that gives all the biographical details because it is a book which was published along with the complete works of Swami Vivekananda, to which Sister Nimitita again wrote a foreword. She was requested to write a foreword to that. And at the same time, she was asked to write a life biography. But she prays to Swamiji, says, in attempting to write your life, I can just express my own vision and understanding only. Your life is far greater than what I can even imagine or write. So that shows the type of Guru Bhakti she had, the reverence she had for the Master, unlike Sturdy and other people. Uh, so you will find she was the most competent and that is why Swami Ramakrishnananji and later on Swami Shardhanji, as we shall see, uh, requested her, you are the right person to write the biography and she obliged. So Prabuddha Bharata, which was started when Swamiji was alive, uh, published the master as I saw him. She did not write it as a book first. She just said, I'll write some reminiscences and they were compiled together from 1906. She must have started writing earlier, but maybe she had edited it many times. And she serially wrote uh, uh, articles for the monthly magazine Prabuddha Bharata. And from 1906 to 1910, they published the whole master as I saw him. And the first edition, which was published of the master as I saw him, I mean, they uh, what she wrote as chapters, different chapters, or maybe parts of different chapters, which uh, were published serially monthly for four years, 1906 to 1910. Later on, they were all gathered and published as a book which formed the first edition of Swamiji's life and it was released on 1st February 1910. It is such a wonderful coincidence that tomorrow is the 1st February and we have started discussing this wonderful life on this auspicious day. A few days after he landed in India, and a few days after Sister Nivedita landed in India. So these dates are coinciding. And plus, 1st February, tomorrow is the auspicious day in 1910, 122 years ago, when 
this biography was published on Swamiji's birthday. So in that year, Swamiji's birthday came on 1st February. It, the birthday according to the Janma Tithi, the Indian calendar, it changes. Uh, this year it was here, it was <clears throat> in January, sometimes it is uh, on 14 January, 18 January, it changes every year. But on in, in that year, 1910, uh, the first edition was released and that was on his birthday on 1st February, which was uh, uh, Swami Sharadananji was the General Secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission in his benedictory note to that book. Because she asked him, he was the one who inspired her constantly that you complete this book. Because Swami Shardanji was himself busy. Of course, he had not started writing the great master, but he was contemplating and he knew that Sister Nevidita's biography would be a companion volume to Sri Ram Krishna's biography, which he was to write, which we are discussing on Thursday, Sri Ram Krishna, the great master. So she also used the same words, the master as I saw him. Because when Sri Ram Krishna biography was written by Shardanji. It was about his master. His master was Sri Ramakrishna. Master means guru. In those days, you cannot write Sri Ramakrishna, the great guru. So, master was the word which normally English people understood. So, here also, she names this biography as the master as I saw him. So, it is one of the first biographies, you, you may say, even before any biography of Swami Vivekananda, except that Gujarati life, very short life, but that is a very, very short life, giving all the incidents. But at least we should give credit to that author who wrote a biography even before Swami Vivekananda passed away. She so should appreciate the greatness of uh, that author. But still, this was the first comprehensive, you may say, biography. She started writing it in 1906 and in 1910, finally. Of course, afterwards it was translated into Bengali, but it, it goes to the credit of the universal message of Swami Vivekananda that his first biography should be written in a language other than his own. That is, he was born in Bengal, but the first biography that shows his conviction that a prophet is honored, is less honored in his own land, but the other lands first accept him. And then, of course, uh, West Bengal uh, responded and then wrote so many wonderful biographies of Swami Vivekananda were written. But much later, much later, even the complete works of Swami Vivekananda uh, appeared in English first. Many of his works appeared in English. And that is why Sister Nivedita says the gift he has given to the Western world through the medium of English, long after English language vanishes from Indian subcontinent, maybe it will be replaced one day by a national language, which India is still struggling to uh, finalize because there's so much of quarrel between the states. Everybody uh, has a outlook that my language is the best. So it is so difficult to even have a national language. So Sister Nivedita writes in the Master and his message that long after, maybe a day may come when English shall not be spoken so extensively as it is now in India, but they will with gratitude look upon these wonderful pages of the complete works. They will look upon it as a great gift Swamiji gave to the West and that gift has come back, will come back to all the vernacular languages, including Bengali. So his complete works in Bengali, his biography, they were written much after, much later than the English biography was published. And even one Gujarati, as I said. So that shows that his impact was felt even when I, he was alive in different parts of the world. See, it is not the age in which he lived was not an age of social media like today. That you do something here, instantly it spreads all over the world. It doesn't happen that way. 
in those days information traveled very slowly through the medium of print the print media especially publication of books magazines newspapers they were the only media and perhaps radio at a much later stage radio was not so popular it was perhaps not even discovered uh, the uh, bbc and other channels when swami ji lived otherwise his speeches would have been recorded and broadcast there was no other media other than the print media so whatever is available today thanks to his wonderful english disciple goodwin is whatever he could record and whatever others could record and whatever he wrote his letters and whatever was recorded by other people like master as i saw him by nivedita these are the only materials which are available in english language except for a few letters which he wrote to his guru bhai in bengali 99% of the material of his complete works is in english so that's why nivedita says in this preface that the gift that he gave to the western world in a language which may long after that language will cease to be a prominent language in india which i think will take a time, while to happen because even today that is the most universal of language for communication between different states they tried hindi a lot in india to have a national language <clears throat> ultimately you will be surprised to know india has as many national languages as uh, the major languages that have been accepted by the constitution of india so each state says my language is prominent so it will take a while of course some great founders of the indian constitution like ambedkar were of the opinion that sanskrit would be a ideal national language if at all india has to have a national language but unfortunately because it was not spoken by many people or for several other uh, reasons it was not accepted and they chose the next best that was hindi which even today it is uh, people find it difficult there's so much of difficulty in making people accept a national language so i think for a long time to come uh, english will be a very popular media for especially among the educated class and as nivedita says the gift he gave to the western world through this uh, language the immortal ideas of his master of vedanta as interpreted and lived by his master he gave out to the entire world and that gift will be a eternal gift she is grateful she says indian should be grateful that the gift he gave to the west now is coming back to them and being translated into different languages so the benedictory note which sardanand ji wrote was again of course in english uh, unlike his great master which was first written in bengali and then translated into english uh, but here he writes a foreword a benedictory note thanking nivedita for this wonderful biography he says uh, as usually began his works by uh, sending salutations to the divine mother he says salutation to mother in sending out into this into the world this is sharda ranji writing about this book before we start discussing this book i would like to read out this benedictory note when the book was published on 1st february 1910 the auspicious birthday of swami vivekananda according to janma tithi the general secretary of the ramkrishna mission swami sharda ranji wrote this book uh, wrote this benedictory note to that book and it is published now in all the editions it is published he writes salutation to mother in sending out into the world this book the tribute of her love and gratitude to her guru see the words it is a tribute she has paid not to the intellect not to the wonderful capacity swami vivekananda had uh, but to the love and gratitude she had the tribute of her love the love she had for her guru and the gratitude the um, gratefulness she felt <coughs> to her guru and then he says 
uh, this book being the tribute of her love and gratitude to her guru nivedita has the blessings and good wishes of all his brothers now his by his brothers he is on behalf of swami brahmananda who was the president and all the other guru bhais swami shardanand ji says we uh, we have the good wishes of all the brothers because you have taken up this task at our request and we wish that this and the, uh, <clears throat> he writes below belur math february 1st 1910 so this shows this is the historical perspective of how she wrote the biography and what was her <clears throat> her intention or maybe what you what was her motivation the motivation of course was the, where the guru bhai so asked her to write but still from in from inside she was uh, grateful to swami vivekananda she was it was an outpouring like a heart poured out to her at the feet of her guru so on february 2nd 1910 nivedita wrote to her friend mrs sara bull she says yesterday was swami ji's birthday that is 1st february and one copy was hastily made see they had not printed the whole lot <clears throat> for me to take to the mat and put on his sofa so there is a nice small sofa in his room donated by his western disciples including a cot which was donated by his western women disciples so she wanted to take one copy the first copy print copy which was hastily made because they were uh, they had not printed the whole lot but she they managed she managed to bind a book and put it on his sofa to dedicate uh, it to her guru soon after its publication it was published on that day it is it was acclaimed as a masterpiece of biographical writing by none other than professor t k cheney in his review the hibbert journal uh, i don't know whether i think it's one of the uh, popular journal uh, in the uk so in january 1911 he wrote a review <clears throat> he writes a western magazine journal hibbert journal of the january 1911 that is almost one year afterwards after reading the printed book perhaps it was which was sent by review by sister nivedita he says some wonderful words about this book he says he writes a review he reviews this book he says it may be placed among the choicest religious classics below the various scriptures but on the same shelf with the confessions of saint augustine and the life of saint francis so what he want means to say that though it may not be it may not be placed at the same level or it may not have the same importance as the great master or the wonderful scriptures of hinduism and christianity and all they may not be classics of that kind but confessions of saint augustine and they were all uh, best one of the best books written on christianity and life of saint francis so he says it definitely her attempt is as good if not better than these wonderful classics and they can be kept so much of uh, respect this biography or this book got so since then we find it has gone into so many other editions all published many editions along with her other books note of notes of some wanderings with swami vivekananda which is which she has included some of the material she has included and then there were more more material which she has constantly sent to all the journals she was a very voracious writer she wrote to brahmavadin then udbodhan office she wrote in english she also uh, Uh, wrote many things which were published the udbodhan office was meant to publish your bengali books in those days they printed many english books of swami ji as well later on of course prabuddha bharata published his complete works but some books like gyan yoga raj yoga they were all published by udbodhan as well the english version along with the bengali translation which was done much later so 
the first editor, I mean, most of the books uh, were published, Nimidita's books were published by Udbodhan because she was very close to mother and she used to visit Udbodhan very often and Shardhananji had given this responsibility. So whatever she wrote were either published in Prabuddha Bharata or Brahmavadin because Vedanta Kesari was not yet born. Uh, Vedanta Kesari was first published as Brahmavadin, later on it was shifted and converted into Vedanta Kesari. So she wrote articles for both Prabuddha Bharata and Brahmavadin and all of them plus her earlier writings before she met Swami Vivekananda. All of them you will find in the wonderful uh, complete works of Sister Nivedita. That is also worth reading because you see a distinct change. She was a very, very famous writer. In fact, she uh, Sesame Club of the famous club which had so many great people like Bertrand Russell and all many other people who were members was founded by Nivedita. So she was very well known in the literary circles in England even as a young Margaret Noble even before she came in contact with Swamiji. But if you read her writings which were very powerful, very good pieces of English literature uh, in, uh, in the complete works in volume 4, you will find most of her writings which she had written before meeting Swami Vivekananda in London uh, are published there because they are also part of her complete works. But then after meeting Swami Vivekananda, there was a distinct change and so many wonderful books she wrote. Master as I saw him was a serial. She also wrote a beautiful book, Footfalls of Indian History. Perhaps no historian in India would have written such a wonderful book on Indian history as Nivedita. She was such a wonderful student. She traveled and she recorded all the travels, notes of some wanderings with Swami Vivekananda. She traveled all throughout India. She even went to Kashmir, Srinagar <clears throat> and many places of pilgrimage. So those were also recorded. Then she also recorded uh, her other, um, I mean, her other conversations which she had with Swamiji, especially on Indian history. Because when they were wandering, Swami Vivekananda was explaining the significance of the great historical people who made India. The different kings, the different rulers, noble rulers, the different philosophers, the different holy places, places of pilgrimage, the lives of different saints. You will find so many wonderful uh, writings of Sister Nivedita uh, in this complete works. And you will find The Footfalls of Indian History, which is another book. And another wonderful book she wrote was The Web of Indian Life, which is, it is a masterpiece. She wrote it so that mothers, the mothers of India, or even mother anywhere in the world, the, they would get a clear idea how storytelling could be used, how storytelling can be a very powerful media to transmit, transmute or uh, to, to uh, transmit knowledge to the younger generation and how the web of Indian life, the cradle tales of Hinduism, web of Indian life is another book, a series of articles, but the cradle tales of Hinduism tales which a mother tells her uh, children when they are in the cradle. She starts and then she continues that, mother continues that education. So the cradle tales of Hinduism was published by some London or American publisher, I'm not sure, but that became also became a bestseller. So some of these wonderful books which, part, which form part of her complete works, they show how much insight she landed there in 1898 and by 1904 until between 1904 and 1910, she wrote so many books apart from running a school, collecting money for that. She practically dedicated her whole life to India, India's culture and mainly as Swami Vivekananda had expressed it. And through her, we find the unuttered 
uh, words which we uh, the, the 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 words which Swamiji uttered, but which were not been recorded by anybody else. So some of her private conversations, some of his understanding of India, historical understanding in, in the ideas which he expressed to her, have found their way in, through her writings into this complete works. So it's a wonderful journey, and I'm sure that when as we go on reading the master as I saw him. We will find a fascinating journey, not only between a short interaction she had with her guru, few years, hardly a few years she lived. So the master as she saw him, but not only that, what she got from her master, what inspiration she got, what ideas she got. So it's a wonderful uh, book, if which will combine uh, a Western woman's understanding of Swami Vivekananda, not just a woman, but a Western citizen will appreciate this book because through her writings, she will give a Western perspective, how a person who was born and brought up and educated and who became a literary figure uh, in her own country appreciates, understands not only her guru, but the India that she saw through her guru's eyes. So that is a fascinating study, both for devotees of the West, I mean, Western devotees as well as Indian devotees, because how a Westerner in such a short time by the grace, infinite grace of her guru could grasp the wonderful ideas of both East and the West, especially India. Uh, as Ravindana Tagore said, if you want to know India, he wrote to Roma Rola, if you want to know India, read Vivekananda. So after, this will be a companion study of because they are now planning to introduce Master as I saw him in the complete works itself, not as a separate biography, but because they are reminiscences of uh, Sister Nevedita about Swami Vivekananda and his words. So they are as good as Swami Vivekananda's words. So maybe they will find their way in the new edition of the complete works of Swami Vivekananda. They deserve a place there. So I hope it will be done soon because they are, uh, as, as has been mentioned here, it is a classic. It is one of the choicest religious classic ever written by a disciple. So anyway, we will conclude. We are running short of time. I'll just see if there are some questions and we'll conclude today. Yeah. Uh, yes, the first question is, how many disciples Swamiji gave Diksha to? It is not known because in those days he was wandering all over the world. So we do not even know whether he has given formal mantras to whom. Some he has just, uh, they were just following him. Maybe he has not given any mantra, but definitely has given mantra to a large number of uh disciples in the West. That is why once he mentioned, it is recorded somewhere, I don't know exactly where, he says, uh, too much of traveling in the West has drained away all my spiritual energy, so I have to regain it. So he wanted to go to the Himalayas and do a lot of tapasya to, to regain what he freely distributed in the West. He must have inspired, otherwise why will he get such wonderful gems of disciples like Nivedita. It, it would have been, he must have initiated a innumerable people. But unlike <clears throat> the later disciples, because in those days Ramakrishna mission was not there. There was no systematic approach to Mantra Diksha. So they, no record has been kept as they keep it now. So we know who are the direct disciples of these direct disciples who are mother's disciples, who are Sri Ramakrishna's disciples, who are the disciples of those disciples. All those records now are available because after the mission was started, things have become very systematic. But Swamiji must have given Diksha to a lot of people, even while he was traveling in, in India. So in the West, of course, he gave, but uh, we do not know because nothing has been published except we know from the disciples themselves who have written their memoirs, they have written that they were blessed by initiation by him. 
so there is no list as such now <clears throat> when thakur describes the very high caliber of swami ji as recorded by m was that not heard or noted by his brothers even though not banded together at that time yes it was definitely heard but see swami vivekananda about narain swami ji told many things to him he did not say it publicly for example many things are known later <clears throat> though they knew if you read the first biography of swami vivekananda in gujarati uh the <clears throat> short biography which was published there kalipada ghosh is telling uh, kalipada ghosh is telling um, uh, this maganlal patel who was the author that keshav chandra sen who was a great person at that time everybody knew keshav brahmo samaj was famous in gujarat and all over india they knew that brahmo samaj prarthana samaj they were great reform movements and keshav was a great hero so in that small biography because of because kalipad ghosh would have overheard it or it was well known <clears throat> he writes that one siram krishna told a gathering or maybe he told narain that keshab has one power say keshab uh, has keshab is great if you consider keshab as have possessing one power narain has 18 powers so 18 times great i mean he was just explaining that of course many people heard that many of the direct disciples especially the householder disciples but you see people just forget when you are living with a person you don't understand his greatness that is what swami ji said when you live and move you see the you see the you get a limited view of that person and mahamaya as it were makes you forget that is what turiyanand ji says when we lived with him we thought he was just one of us a little more brilliant but after his passing away the greatness is revealed and then he says then we realize that he was like the moon where we were just playing with him playing with the reflection of the moon in water so it it happens very often when we are in touch with some great person we don't get an idea and it happens in ordinary people also when a person is alive we we don't treat him properly and then after he passes away after he goes then we try to uh, demonize him that is why one of our swami who was very close to a very senior swami whom he served a lot he served a lot he did so much of seva to that swami i do not want to name is a very respected direct disciple of uh, sri ramakrishna he served him and when he passed away the swami who had served him a lot when he was alive was just asked jokingly they asked him uh, you were not seen at his funeral i mean you didn't come there so what is the reason uh, you respected him so much then he said something significant he said after a person dies everybody gives him respect but he is a real disciple or he is a real uh, 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 admirer of that person if he does something for him when he is alive so he said whatever i had to do i did when he was alive and i don't believe in honoring somebody after his death and while not being of so much use while he is still alive so that is Uh, that's the reason why these guru bhais and nobody knew that he would pass away so soon they knew about his greatness they even saw his greatness that he has done so much work in the west but after all human being has a very short memory they don't honor a person when he is alive that is maya otherwise the, perhaps the person will be full of ego that is also uh, a, m- memories are not especially when you are dealing with a person there are so many uh, issues which one faces and we don't recognize a prophet that's why swami ji said a prophet is not recognized in his own land while he is alive after swami ji passed away then suddenly the whole of bengal realized what a great soul we lost though there were some people jealous people who even criticized him after he passed away 
that is a very sad chapter we let us not discuss about it but he had his own enemies in the sense out of jealousy there were his own friends some of whom studied with him who could not tolerate his popularity so they said so many things but one was the famous uh, i forgot his name panchanan or some some uh, great author so he was shocked he, he he criticized constantly criticized swami ji when he was alive and he wrote against him so uh, later on when he, he was his friend class classmate or class friend and swami ji once suddenly uh, bumped into him he just came and met swami ji somewhere in calcutta knowing fully well that he has written so many things up against him in the newspapers but swami ji called him by his old name pet name and though swami ji was very great he did not have to do this uh, because this fellow wanted some cheap popularity so perhaps he would have done but swami ji treated him so nicely and embraced him he said oh you are my same friend or something like that and then that totally shocked that person that what have i done he is such a noble heart and then he became his swami ji's great admirer and then he started writing about swami ji after his passing away it came as a big shock so the first memory he wrote he said i feel so bad now that i treated this person uh, so shabbily uh, because of some jealousy and then he wrote about swami ji so it is very much possible that a person's greatness is not appreciated though thakur has said even holy mother said so many things about swami vivekananda but the guru bhai is perhaps it is the memory uh, doesn't the good things which are told about a person we don't remember if there's something wrong with a person we delight in remembering that that is the, that is why that is the whole difference between vivekananda and most of the other people his contemporaries swami ji remembered the good things what study did to him what miss muller did to him and he forgot whatever things they have done to harm him or maybe to criticize him they don't remember because they know the life is short we to be spent in criticizing people which which does not help anybody neither the person whom you criticize nor the person who criticizes it it takes both down in fact it takes the person who criticizes down not the person who is criticized so swami ji knew that so he was so positive in his approach and many people when they used to point out that some of the western disciples were saying this about you that about you he said i have no time you see i have come i have fulfill my master's mission i will do it the way i know let people praise me let them criticize me that is their problem so once he told one western disciple when she was trying to correct him you should do this you should do that that is what happens everybody thinks that they can advise other people how they should be living without bothering about how they should be living themselves so some lady was constantly elderly lady in england was constantly advising swami ji and trying to show that this is not correct that is not correct then swami ji got disgusted with a very uh, humorous way he said my dear lady what i am is written on my forehead if you can read it the it is for your good or maybe it is your luck if you can't read it the loss is yours not mine you go ahead you do express yourself whichever way you want what i am is written on my forehead that is not going to change and i shall i am content to be that i don't want to uh, convince everybody i don't even have time to do that you had such a short life and that is why nimedita wrote something and i'll conclude with this she wrote something wonderful she says i learned from the master that 99% of our time is spent in trying to show to the world what we are not not what we are if we just our preserve we want to conserve our energy as swami ji did just be what you are then it saves a lot of energy 
99% of the time nivedita writes i learned from my master that he spent in trying to prove to the world what i am not i want to show the world i want recognition i want this i want that but i don't focus on what i should be if i focus on what i should be and what i am then all the energy which i spend in trying to show will be used in creative purpose and will make progress very fast so with this note we will conclude om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat sri ram krishna arpanamastu